All right, welcome to another video. And this time you're gonna be giving, getting a quiz. I'm not gonna give any hints or anything like that, but good luck. There's gonna be five questions and there's gonna be about 10 seconds given each time. There's a countdown timer. Pause it, try to go through it, come up with an answer. And after all those are over, uh, we'll go through them. All right, I'll see you shortly. All right, well, the quiz is over and we're gonna go over the questions now. So I hope you did well and you were able to at least jot something down and understand a little bit of how you got to the time complexity. Okay, so let's begin. So with question number one, the following code computes the product of A and B, what is the runtime? All right, so I'm not gonna actually go through the meaning of the code for each of these. We're just pretty much just gonna go over the answer, all right? Uh, so this just, like I said, computes the product of two inputs, A and B. Uh, there's essentially just a for loop here that we really care about. Everything is a constant time. So this for loop is going from zero to uh, whatever B is, right? So this is four, this is gonna, uh, it's gonna be zero, we're gonna go zero to three. So that's four times, you know, we're gonna, there's gonna be four iterations. And uh, then we're gonna add A to the sum um, each time. So, so really all we're doing is just going over this for loop of whatever B is. So the answer, so the answer here is just big O of B. You can say big O of N, doesn't matter. Just B is the input here. Um, it really, it's not that big of a deal, okay? But that's the answer, big O of B. Because it's just based on the length, uh, whatever B is, that's the input, all right? Okay, so question number two, the following code computes A to the power of B was its runtime, all right? Uh, so we have some is statements here, and this is recursion, as you can tell. Uh, so we don't care about the two base cases. They don't matter. We're just worried about, it says return A times the power of um, A and then B minus one. So this B minus one is the key uh, since that's what's being decremented and that's all the base cases are revolving around the B input. Uh, then everything then this recursively being called is based on the input of B. So whatever B is, that's how many times this we're going to uh, recur. That's how, how many times uh, the power method is going to be recursively called. And so with that, the answer to this is the is big O of B or big O of N, whichever. OK, OK, question number three, uh, the following code computes A mod B. So what do we have here? We have two inputs. We don't care about the if statements, the, um, the assignment variable, and then we're just returning once. So all, all this is all is happening is we're going through each of these lines of code once, and that's it. Uh, down here, returning a minus uh, the div variable, which is a divided by b times b. So this is just big O of one, because no matter what the inputs are, a and b, no matter what the sizes are, we're only going through this once. We're only going through all this these lines of code once, so this is big O one, okay? Okay, so question number four, the following code performs integer division, was its runtime? And assume A and B are both positive. So this is one of the tricky ones because as you see, there's no actual division operation, uh, no division mathematical operation happening here. Um, this is just another way to actually do division. 
But uh, so let's go over what's going on. There's two inputs. I uh, don't care about the assignment variables. So here's our loop. While the sum is less than or equal to a, the sum plus equals b, and we're incrementing a count there, the count variable. Okay, and then we're returning count. So that's actually a hint that, um, yeah, so this is a hint, uh, how many times count, whatever count is, that's what we're returning. So that's, that's kind of going to be based, that's going to help us figure this out. So what you might want to do is, well, what I did is let's jot some hard code, some number down so we can see what this is, because it's not straightforward um, what the answer is, right? So let's say A is, we're going to do division. So let's just do uh, A is 10, B is 5. Okay, so while sum is less than or equal to A, so sum is B, right? So while B, so 5 is less than or equal to A, which is 10, it is, sum plus equals B. So now sum equals 10. Uh, let's do iteration, iterations for these inputs. So how many times are we going through the while loop? Um, so this we're going, so we're, we already went through it once. So while sum, let's do it, do it again. Sum less than or equal to A. So sum is B. So five is less than or equal to 10, which is true. Sum plus equals B. So the sum is five, we're adding B. So five plus five is 10, and we're incrementing count once. So we're going through the while loop again. 10 is less than or equal to 10. So sum plus or equals B. So now we have 10 plus 5, which is 15, and we're incrementing count. Well, count is 2. Uh, we go through it again. 15 is not less or equal to 10. All right, so we went through this twice. Okay. Now let's do another one. Um, let's do, let's do, um, yeah, let's just do like 20 and 5. Okay. Uh, so we, we get to the point to where, uh, sum is 15 and a is 10 or yeah, fit, sum is 15, a is 20. So we just did that here. Um, so we've already went through this twice. And, um, so sum 15 is less than or equal to 20. So now we're gonna add five again and increment count, which is three this time. Uh, we're gonna go through it again. 20 is less than or equal to, uh, 20. So we add five again. So now, uh, sum is 25 and we increment count. And count at this point is four. Twenty-five is not less than or equal to uh, twenty, so we would just return count, which at that point is four. So there's so we're starting to see a pattern here. All right, um, you could do this a couple more times, and it's going to be the same thing. Uh, so, so what does this mean? Whenever a is ten, b is five, uh, the uh, the amount of iterations we go over is two, or you could just say what what is count, right? Uh, whenever a is 20 and b is 5, iteration is 4. What is that the same as? That's the same as big O of a divided by b. So that's what the answer is, okay? Time complexity is big O of a divided by b. All right? All right, question number five. If a binary search tree is not balanced, how long might it take, for the wor in the worst case, to find an element in it? Well, you kind of have to understand what a binary search tree is and also what does balanced mean? So a Balanced binary search tree is when the depth of a left subtree and a right subtree does not is not more than one. Quick example, quick example. If I can draw nodes, ish. Okay, so the left subtree over here has a depth of one. Over here has a depth of three. Three minus one is two. Two is greater than one. So this is not a balanced binary search tree. All right, and uh, if you have a balanced binary search tree. This that would this this would never happen. It would you know, we could do like this, cross that out. That's a bind. That's a that is a balanced binary search tree. Okay, uh, and that's because the depth here is now two and not three. Okay, so that just means that any pretty much anything goes in a binary search tree that's not balanced. You just keep inserting and, you know, we don't care about the depths really. So a worst case for that is we can keep inserting elements. They're always greater than, than the other element before it. So we can kind of keep going down, right? So now when we search, 
what if we had to search for the last element here? This one right here. This happens to be the one that we're looking for. Well, we went down. There's only six nodes in the tree, and we had to go to the last one. Because um, in a typical, on average case in a binary search tree, um, you would say uh, you could always knock out half of the nodes at each level on average, especially in a balanced one. You know? So that means it's log of n, which is what you might have thought. But again, this is the worst case. And the worst case is that we had to traverse all nodes in an unbalanced binary search tree to find the node that we're looking for. So that means that this is big O of n, okay? n being the input size, which in this case is six nodes. Um, you can do it for 10, you know, whichever, it doesn't matter. Um, but the worst case is going through all the nodes to find what you need, all right? And typically it doesn't happen in the average case because you can eliminate half of them on each level, which makes it log of n. Okay, well, uh, I hope you, hope you did well. Uh, let, let me know in the comments how you did. And if you have any more questions, uh, please uh, reach out and I will get back to you as soon as possible. All right, I'll see you next time.